How and where was he arrested and what lies ahead of the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra in Namdikanu? We'll be finding out from his representative. Gunmen attack Kano State Governor Abdullahi Ganduje's convoy a day after the killing of a Zafara state lawmaker. And Kano State Sharia Police, the Hisba, bans the use of mannequins to display clothes in boutiques of market. Glad to have you join us on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. I am Aneta Felix. And I am Osaogi Ogboa. Welcome to the month of July. Happy New Month. Uh, I think that works and we hope that it's going to be a very interesting one on The Breakfast and of course in your lives at home. Indeed. And we know that the mannequin is trending today and uh, not because of the beautiful clothes on them, mm. but because in Kano State, the HESPA you know, is basically saying that mannequins in Kano is is basically banned. And the Hispa um, commander in Kano basically says that using mannequins, you know, promotes immorality. And it just makes me ask questions, you know, lots of questions about what they perceive as immorality and how exactly they would think about it that way. Because it mentioned how this goes against all the Sharia laws, it goes against Islam, and that anybody who's found with a mannequin or use a mannequin to display their, their outfits would be arrested. And the Kano state has been divided into five, basically. So, I mean, this is, this is what it is in Kano state at the moment. It makes you wonder if this basically is the priority in the state or just how big of an issue is, you know, morality and the use of mannequins in Kano? Uh, well, uh, this is, you know, just another example of, you know, moments when um, grown-ups and, you know, society refuses to take um, or, you know, let people take responsibility for their actions and instead blames, um, you know, very, very irrelevant things. You know, it's pretty much similar with, you know, when, when we have conversations on sexual assault, you know, in, in, um, in uh, concerts, you know, and instead of the conversation to be to let young men in the society know that they need to be able to have better self-control and there's no excuse whatsoever why you shouldn't be able to have self-control regardless of what a woman is wearing or regardless of whatever you know stupid story that they, they used to defend it they they always was you know they they shy away from that conversation and instead focus more attention on oh you know why would she wear that oh why is she coming out to a concert at night where there's you know going to be young men and, and things like that so it's it's another you know example of this but this one is even more silly um uh and also it's it's worrisome for me because well not just for me for a lot of people that have seen respond to this because it seems like Hizba is turning into, and someone I saw someone comment and say Hizba is turning into, um, you know, a very, very, very sachet, low key um, uh, group. Let me not call them, you know, the names that they call them. That basically is going to start pushing out its own ideologies on society. Um, based on what it, what it is that they wake up with, you know, in the morning. They might wake up tomorrow morning and say that, well, they're not very comfortable with women driving in Kano, and they will get there and start to try to enforce a ban on women driving in Kano. And that's, that's really where it's going, because for the longest time, they've continued to make their own laws, make their own rules, and just be reckless, arrest people for reasons that are completely unconstitutional. Ban the sale and of beer, arrest people who yes, sell beer. Yes, you know, I saw a story yesterday where a guy was arrested because he refused to pray. Um, after you know the same his back cut his hair or some some story like that and so they've they've, they've turned into a completely almost lawless society um, trying to enforce their own laws on the people and so whoever it is that wakes up in the morning the his bad chairman of or you know, whoever is in charge of his by in that state might wake up or in that community might wake up in the morning and decide well you know I, 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 I'm very very uncomfortable with Maggie these days, I think we need to ban, you know, uh, Maggie. I, well, I'm very, very uncomfortable with the, you know, type of onions that they sell these days. How come this onion promotes immorality? Taste, it promotes immorality. We need to ban it. Um, and that's where it's getting to. Someone actually said it's getting, you know, they're starting to push a, a, a very similar ideology with the Boko Haram, you know, who simply uh, don't like Western education. And so they decided that they, you know, were going to be fighting against Western education and some of all of that. And that's where it's going. Because a mannequin is simply to display clothes, to display wares. And if you and your society cannot see 
it as simply just a plastic, um, 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 you know, whatever uh, creation to display beautiful fashion, to display clothes, then you have a problem. How do you even get ideas by looking at a mannequin? Plastic, really. It, How it do is, you get ideas? Well, that's, that's, that's really where uh, we are with it. I think and it they, just they... exposes the perversion, in my opinion. If you're banning the use of mannequins in Kano, it just exposes the perversion of the people who started the law, people who are trying to enforce the law, rather than the general public. Because you need to check yourself and your mind. Yes, and that's why I've started by saying that they basically are starting to get to a place where they refuse to take responsibility for their thoughts and for their actions and for the lack of self-control that they have. But instead, they force new laws and new rules on society, forgetting that, that um, the Kano state is not just a Muslim state. There are Christians who also live in Kano, who do business Asides in Kano. Besides that, I mean, check the news and find out, um, this is just fact, right? People who commit rapes in that place. You hear an Islamic cleric rapes two-year-old. So are you saying that he wasn't Islam enough? So, well, I mean, it's obvi it just... Obvious, obviously not. But it, it's... it's um, it's important, you know, and I said this, I think I said this two days ago, that people in northern Nigeria need to start to act and talk and speak against some of all these things be before it gets too late, before, because it's going to get to a stage where it is now beyond control. It's going to get to a stage where there's now a lot of young men who feel entitled to make laws in society, who feel entitled to decide that, well, we don't like the way that this thing happens here, or we don't like the way that, you know, this person's um, rights are being, you know, the person enjoys his, his or her own human rights, and we would fight against it. And if they don't start to speak and control those things now, it's going to get late very, very soon, and we will have another problem on our hands. The Nigerian government itself being silent and being quiet, the state governments themselves being silent when these things are happening is, is shocking for me that no state governor in the whole of northern Nigeria has been able to say, Oga, oh this, this thing you're saying, please relax. You know, understand, you know, Sharia laws, understand, you know, Islam and, you know, some of the things they're saying, but relax, please. We still live in a same society where these things should not be a problem and you cannot wake up in the morning and decide on your own that this thing will no longer be used in my state. You need and to I, relax. I think, I think when, when we look at the impact of this law, it seems like from a purely religious angle, but you know what effect this will have on people's businesses? Because people who basically sell wares, who sell, you know, all their, you know, attire for, you know, I don't know what they call now, Jalabia, I, I believe, you know, they need to display these things. People need to see just how a great fit it would be. And you're saying that people should not promote their businesses using mannequins, so should you, they should just hang them. I mean, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't see the fitting of an outfit if it's not on a mannequin. Would I, or do I have to go try on every outfit before I decide if I want to make, make a purchase? So I think on, on the long run, this is just going to affect people's businesses, and that really shouldn't be the aim of whatever this law is. Shame on, shame on whoever it is, and you know, whoever they are who woke up that morning and decided that that's going to be a new law, because me, it really just tells me that a lot of those people in those groups have zero self-control over themselves and they try to impose that lack of self-control on the people. So terrible. And uh, basically, um, his name is the Commander General of Hezba in Kano State. His name is Sheikh Harun Ibn Sina. He announced this on Wednesday, saying the use of mannequins uh, for advert purposes contravenes Islamic injunctions. All right. Let's know what you think on our social media platforms. It's at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. Still staying with Kano, the convoy of Governor Abdullahi Gandoje was attacked by gunmen yesterday and three security personnel were injured. Reports say the convoy was returning from Zamfara State where Gandoje had joined other APC governors to welcome the governor of Zamfara State to his party. The Kano State Commissioner for Information, Mohamed Gaba, says Governor Gandoje wasn't traveling in the convoy when the attack took place. Okay, so still in Kano State talking about security. And this comes just after uh, a lawmaker in Kano State was reported to have been killed by Mbara. terrorists Mbara. around the uh, Sheme Funtua Road in Katsina State. So um, we've had attacks on different governors in the north, and now it's the governor of Kano State here. 
But what I find interesting is when uh, pressmen reached out to um, the police PRO in Kano State, they denied any knowledge of it. They said, we, we don't have any idea. We were not informed about any attack on the governor. And they referred them to the Zamfara State Police. You know, they contacted the Zamfara State Police and they said they have no idea what happened because the Kano State governor had joined other governors to welcome Governor Bello Betawali of Zamfara, who, had joined, who was just uh, defected from the PDP to the All Progressives Congress. So the Zamfara State Police PRO say said they they have no idea what happened and referred them to the Katsina state governor so it makes you want to ask what really are the facts of this matter was there really an attack if all the police um, uh, spokespersons are denying um, knowledge of such attack but then we also hear news about um, people in the convoy sustaining varying degrees of injuries oh well um it's expected you know and it's it's, it's regular it's normal practice for Nigerian police to first of all deny um, you know, some of all these things. And then eventually when, you know, it's now public notice, then they put out a, you know, an actual statement. Uh, so there is that, you know, it's also mentioned that the governor wasn't in the convoy at the time that this attack took place. Um, but, you know, wh wh what I find funny is the fact that um, a governor decides to change parties and, you know, you see governors from different states traveling to go welcome him into a party. So he, he woke up, you know, whatever, whenever that, you know, decision came over him and decided I'm going to change party. And so all of you are traveling now to welcome him into a party. Something as, as irrelevant as that is putting Nigerian governors on the road with their convoys. And every single time that those convoys have to move, it costs them, you know, taxpayers money. So they move with those 10, 12, 15 vehicles to a different state to go welcome um, a governor. And it's the same thing. When, you know, somebody decides that their daughter wants to get married, you see Nigerian governors leave du their duty posts that day, leave states that they're meant to govern and travel all the way. Private jets are going to be landing in different states, you know, just for somebody's son's wedding. Um, so that's, you know, the, the first point, you know, that I will make with how irrelevant some of all these trips are. And then second is the fact that there is, you know, been loads of conversations on things that, that shouldn't really be their concerns. But the, the biggest challenge that they have, which is security, they've refused to actually focus and speak about these things. And they act like all is well and all is fine. So the same you know, the country where you as a governor can't even travel freely without being sure of your safety is the same country where you, of course, are, you're traveling to welcome another you know, governor into a party. Not like you can boldly say that that party has done exceptionally well. Of course, your life is in danger you know, because you're simply going to welcome that governor. And so... We spoke about Namdi County yesterday and the fact that there's a lot of people who were celebrating, oh, he has been, you know, he has been rearrested, forgetting that the main problem that they face in their states is not necessarily Namdi County. The main problem they face in their states is security. And a lot of them cannot travel freely. A lot of them cannot go to their farms or their villages or to their hometowns freely, believing that they will, they will make it there and come back home safely. And that should really be their problem. It shouldn't be anything else but the fact that their states aren't safe. Most of all those states, those communities, those villages aren't safe. A lot of people, hundreds, dozens, thousands of people have been chased out of their hometowns, you know, by bandits and by terrorists and whoever, whoever else. Um, and it still is an ongoing problem. Um, I think it was the Zamfara State lawmaker who was killed, the State House of Assembly um, uh, member who was killed. That doesn't happen, you know, in, in just randomly. You know, he didn't die, you know, in a car accident. You know, he was attacked by, gun by gunmen. He was um, killed. His son was kidnapped. And I think his uh, driver also was also kidnapped. And that is still, you know, a, a challenge in that part of the, in, in that state. These are problems that they can see that happen to them every day. But it doesn't seem to be a big enough problem for residents in, in that state, for people in, in that state to say, oh, we've had enough. You know, and, you know, something must be done. They don't seem to see it as a, as a big enough challenge for them. But there's other things, of course, that happen that, that create more public outcry, like mannequins. His bar doesn't, Funny. you know, decide, you know, of course, I know it's not their role, but if they don't wake up in the morning and say, man, we really need to do what must be done to ensure that our states are safe and ensure that whoever is in charge of security, both at the federal level and at the state level and the local government level, takes responsibility for the lives and security of the people of this state. They, those things aren't challenges. It is a mannequin. They can even ban phones and say, you know, with phones you can have access to content that is un-Islamic. So I wouldn't be surprised if I hear tomorrow that they're banning smartphones. You just need to have that well, until 33, if it is not, If it is not checked, it will get there. You know, and slowly you know with each new day and each new law and each new thing that is banned you know we're going all the way back to the 16th century 
Um, we spoke not long ago about Saudi Arabia, you know, now freeing up um, of, you know, the anniversary, I think, of uh, Saudi Arabia allowing women to drive. Um, we are going back to a place in northern Nigeria where Hizba is taking, you know, those people back to 1970 and back to 1960. Because some of these things that they mention and they decide to ban and they, they arrest people for are things that probably happened in the 40s or in the 50s. And that's where they're going. But Saudi Arabia, that they all go for, uh, to uh, Mecca for pilgrimage, um, for pilgrimage is... <laughs> Moving forward, advancing. it's advancing with their own idea and their own understanding of Islam. But these people choose to remain backward. And that's one of the challenges with putting people in power that aren't necessarily educated enough to understand growth and understand, you know, the idea of moving forward and development. You know, they will bring you back to where they are. They will bring you back to where they were. I wouldn't be surprised know, if, if, if this um, Hezbollah commander is well educated. I wouldn't be surprised. I will. I, I wouldn't. Because <laughs> there's, what's that saying about you can take the the village out of a man or you can't take that? The, there's a proverb about, like, you know, in that light. So I wouldn't actually be surprised if he's educated, but he just shows you the extent of what fanatism can do to a person. Um, let's take a break here and we'll return to join Mr. Ezekiel E.I. Talk for Off the Press.